Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're here to answer any questions you have on the AP Biology sample free response question that College Board released. I'll just go ahead and read through it to summarize here. In many countries, uh, Anopheles gambii mosquitoes are responsible for transmitting the parasite that causes malaria to people through their bites. A primary tool for mosquito control is the use of insecticidal nets sprayed with chemicals known as pyrethroids, which are relatively safe for people but toxic to mosquitoes. However, mosquito resistance to pyrethroids has now become widespread. Pyrethroids interfere with the function of a transmembrane sodium channel found in cells of the mosquitoes. In one common mutation, the channel protein, a phenylalanine, is substituted for a leucine at amino acid position 1014. Scientists hypothesize that this mutation is responsible for some cases of pyrethroid resistance. To investigate the pyrethroid resistance, mosquitoes were collected four times over a two year period from the following two regions. Region A is a southern vegetable growing region where large amounts of insecticide are applied for crop protection. And region B is a northern rice growing region where very little insecticide is applied for rice protection. There is more information provided in the next few questions, but for now, to answer the first two, all we needed was this intro in terms of describing um, what was happening here. So for this first part, the first question is asking us to describe the most likely cause of the amino acid substitution in this sodium channel protein. So what they're referring to is that in this one common mutation to the channel protein, a phenylalanine is substituted for a leucine at amino acid position 1014. So this is just gonna be background knowledge in terms of understanding what causes an amino acid substitution in a protein. So we have to think back and recall how um, proteins are formed and understand that any changes in the amino acid sequence is most likely to be caused when the RNA was transcribed from the DNA. So it's most likely gonna be a change in the DNA sequence that encodes for that sodium channel polypeptide. That's where the mutations are occurring. The mutations are um, in the DNA sequence, which leads to changes in the protein sequence, right? Because changes in the DNA sequence are permanent. Any changes in the amino acid sequence, if there's something that was mistranslated, well, the DNA is gonna be copying out many strands of mRNA and producing other proteins that would essentially uh, have the correct sequence. So for part B, we're gonna explain how the substitution of a single amino acid in the channel protein could cause pyrethroid resistance in mosquitoes. So here we have to be specific in understanding what changes in the amino acid sequence do to a given protein. And you have to think about, well, the sequence is important, but it's really the three-dimensional structure of a protein that impacts the function of that protein. And so we have to link that amino acid replacement, the substitution, to that three-dimensional structure, the tertiary structure of the, of the protein. And so what could happen is the substitution could change the shape of the protein channel so that pyrethroids can no longer affect it, bind to it, or interfere with it, any one of those verbs there. Um, and they're going to do so in terms of interfering with its function. So it's no longer going to function properly. Um, and that's why the mosquitoes would therefore be resistant. So you do have to link that amino acid change to that shape, and then consequently, what does that shape do to how the pyrethroids interact there? If you didn't make that last connection, then you would not get the full points there because we're discussing how does it cause resistance, and so it must be interfering with the protein channel since that's what was discussed here is that pyrethroids interfere with the function of the transmembrane sodium channel. All right, so for part C in D and E, we are given some more information in the passage. So now this, pass this part of the passage is going to help us answer the next few questions. For part C, we're gonna identify the de dependent variable in the experiment whose data are graphed in figure two. So make sure you understand what the experiment is testing at. We're really looking at, and I guess we'll, we'll kind of identify all three of these uh, sort of together here. But in terms of what are we measuring, remember the dependent variable is what are we going to be measuring? If you look at the graphs here, it looks like the graphs are measuring percent mortality as a function of each of these time points here, as well as which type of pyrethroid was used. So, okay. So again, to identify that dependent variable, it's what we're measuring. It sort of also clues us in here is that it's the percent mortality was determined. That's what they are going to be uh, looking for. 
So that is going to be your dependent variable. Alternatively, you could have also mentioned that susceptibility to the insecticide. How susceptible are the mosquitoes to that particular uh, insecticide? So susceptibility or mortality, sort of synonymous there. So either one would, be, would work for an answer there. All right, in terms of the positive control, all right, remember the positive control is the one where we expect to see some sort of expected results. And so the expected result is that the mosquitoes are going to die from the insecticide, right? It's the mutated ones that we're going to expect to see something different. And so that's going to be the experimental. That's what we're sort of looking to test. But the, the strains that are going to be susceptible to the insecticide, um, that's going to be your positive control. So whichever strain, the one with the leucine or with the phenylalanine substituted there, we're going to determine that. But whichever strain it is, that strain that is susceptible to the insecticide is going to be our positive control, the one that we expect to die from the insecticide. All right, the last part here is to justify exposing some mosquitoes to untreated filter paper each time the experiment was performed. So here we're using the untreated case. And so our negative control where we're not treating anything. And so the purpose of the untreated filter paper is to make, to rule out the filter paper. We wanna make sure that it's the insecticides since that's what we're testing, are killing the mosquitoes and not the filter paper itself. So the treatment of untreated filter paper is going to confirm that any observed mortality is from the insecticides and not from the filter paper itself or any other of uh, the variables that are present. Okay, part F. Based on the data in figure two, we're going to describe whether mosquitoes from region A or from region B are more likely to exhibit greater evolutionary fitness if exposed to permethrin in their native environment over the time period of the experiment. So remember we had these two regions, one where there was insecticides and region B where there were no insecticides being used. And so now we're gonna describe which region do the mosquitoes exhibit greater evolutionary fitness only with the permethrin. And so if we look at the permethrin for region A compared to region B, we see lower percent mortality in region A, which means the mosquitoes are surviving more so in region A. And so if we're trying to determine which one exhibits greater evolutionary fitness, well, evolutionary fitness, you must survive to be able to reproduce and pass along those genes. And so because the ones in region A are surviving more, they're more likely to reproduce, and so region A mosquitoes will have a greater evolutionary fitness. For part G, based on the data in figure two, we're gonna describe any significant change in the susceptibility of mosquitoes from region B to each of the two insecticides over the two year period. So whenever we're describing, again, we make sure you are detailed as possible. You wanna identify a lot of the changes, whether it's over one time period or over the entire time period. Be as specific as possible for a question like this. So for permethrin, we see that there's really little change for the first few time points until the last test in June 2010, where we see significantly less susceptible than they had. Been. And so whenever you're going through these questions, you're looking to state with significance, so statistically significant, and that's determined by the error bars. So if the error bars are overlapping or they're pretty close together, there's, they're not statistically significant or different from one another. And so we don't see much difference from the first few time points. It's only when we go to June 2010, we're now even including the error bar. There's no overlap with this error bar in terms of any of these other data points. So June 2010 is going to be significantly less susceptible than they had been from the other three time points or the other three years. For delta methrin, we see more of a change happening here. And so there was a significant decrease from the June 2009 to the October 2009. Again, the error bars don't overlap. Um, and then from October 2009 to June 2010, there was another significant decrease. And so we can state that here, there was a significant decrease in susceptibility from June 2009 to October 2009, and then a further significant decrease from October 2009 to June 2010. Okay, for part H, we're going to be using this table one, which was next provided in the passage. Uh, we're going to use the table to calculate the frequency of the allele coding for phenylalanine in each population of mosquitoes 
in October 2008. Make sure you do it for each population, um, not just one, and then round our answers to two decimal places. So if we look at region A in 2008, that's this first row at the top, we're going to be looking at the frequency of the allele for phenylalanine only. So you need to calculate the frequencies of all of the phenylalanine. So phenylalanine is found in, of course, the homozygote, but also in the heterozygote. And then you have to remember that in the homozygote, there are two alleles of phenylalanine. It's, uh, sorry, there are two copies of the allele coding for phenylalanine, excuse me, since it's homozygous. So for uh, region A, October 2008, we see that there are five alleles from the heterozygote. And then there are 31 from the homozygote, but we have to multiply it by two because it's homozygous. There are two copies. There are two alleles of that allele that codes for phenylalanine. So we're going to multiply that 31 times two and then add those together um, out of a total of 78 alleles. Again, there were 39 mosquitoes, but each mosquito has two copies or two alleles for this gene. So there's a total of 78 alleles. So if we go ahead and add that 5 plus the 62 and divide it by our total of 78, we get a ratio of 67 to 78, uh, which is a frequency or ratio of 0.86. If we go ahead and do the same thing for region B, we see that in region B for October 2008, we have five alleles from the heterozygote two alleles from the homozygote, but again, they're, uh, it's homozygous, so we have two copies of each allele. So it's gonna be multiplied by two to get a total of five plus four, nine alleles for the phenylalanine out of a total of 54. Again, we have to multiply this by two because that's the number of mosquitoes, but there's twice as many alleles because each mosquito has two alleles for this gene. And then nine out of 54 is gonna give us a ratio of 0.17. All right, part I, using mosquitoes from insecticide-free areas, the scientists developed mosquito strains with amino acid substitutions at other positions in the sodium channel protein. They exposed the mosquito strains to non-pyrethroid insecticides. Predict the susceptibility of the mosquitoes to the insecticides. So these mosquitoes are coming from insecticide-free uh, areas. Mosquito strains are being exposed to non-pyrethroid insecticides. So we'd probably predict that these mosquitoes aren't going to have any uh, resistance, their population isn't going to adapt and see a, a, a shift in the allele frequency. So we would expect that the mosquitoes would most likely die from the insecticides, or you can also basically state that they will be pretty susceptible or 100% susceptible to these insecticides. Back to this table again for this last question, we're going to see that the scientists here are making a claim. The scientists claim that the mosquito population of region B evolved resistance over the period of the experiment, and that resistance arose as a result of the immigration of resistant mosquitoes from other regions. Based on the data in table one and the information provided, provide evidence to support the scientist's claim. So you need to make sure you address this particular claim, the fact that it's the immigration of resistant mosquitoes from other regions that's leading to uh, the mosquito population in region B evolving resistance, all right? So we need to make sure that we, we deal with that particular claim. And we're gonna use this data to see if that is happening. And so if we think about how populations change, we can look at the allele frequencies and see how they are changing over time. So we're focusing in on region B. If you wanted to go ahead and look at the allele frequencies for each of these, you could do so and come up with the numbers, or you can just generally look at the trend here. So in terms of homozygous for leucine, we see that that's generally going to decrease, and then the homozygous for phenylalanine is going to increase. And so we see sort of a greater shift in region B, shifting from, you know, we see a greater trend in more of the phenylalanine. We see more copies of the heterozygote as well. So the frequency of the phenylalanine increased from very low we saw that it was very low um, in October 2008 to much higher. Or if you wanted to figure out what those ratios are, um, you could go ahead and do so from 0.7 to 0.5 for population B mosquitoes that come from an area with low insecticide use. Thus, insecticide use is not selecting for those mosquitoes with the phenylalanine allele because they 
were not they didn't have the allele to begin with and they were in a region with uh, no insecticide it could not be the insecticide itself that was um, selecting those mosquitoes it is more likely that the pyrethroid resistant mosquitoes with the phenylalanine allele are immigrating to the area and that's how the allele frequency is increasing in the allele population All right, everybody, good luck studying for your AP bio exams. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment below. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, leave us a like, comment below, or subscribe to our channel.